looking back at it, I feel like there were red flags in front of my face all the time, but I just didn't didn't see them. Jan Jackson's problems started with a phone call in September. He called me and we talked for like an hour about how there was a warrant out for my arrest. The man had a Washington DC area code saying she would have to give him all her money. Why did he say you needed to wire him money to take because care of Because the this? United States wouldn't protect my money. They'd take it from me. During that first conversation, what was it about him that made you trust him? The way he kept on saying that he was out looking out for my best interest and um, how there was this warrant out for my arrest that he sent me a copy of. The scammer emailed her a fake federal arrest warrant for theft, money laundering, and drug abuse. Jackson, a 70-year-old woman, has worked at the same grocery store for the last 25 years. She has no criminal record, no reason to be in trouble, but says the scammer was persistent and very convincing. He just seemed concerned with me, and I had no... I didn't feel I had a reason to doubt him. So she followed the scammer's instructions, cashing out her 401k, IRA, and all her retirement savings, wiring $38,500 to Hong Kong through Landmark Credit Union. I feel so stupid. I should have known better. I, sh I mean, why would I send money to somebody in Hong Kong when I don't even know really who he is? After wiring the money through the credit union, Jackson tried wiring more money from an account at Chase Bank, but that request was halted. And soon after, Jackson realized she'd been had. The FBI says government impersonation scams are some of the most common types of lies people over the age of 60 fall for. And every year, scammers are getting better at conning victims out of larger sums of money. On average, getting paid about 18 grand each time. Last year in Wisconsin, 100 seniors fell victim to government impersonation scams. Why aren't the red flags coming up at the banking institutions? Ultimately, it comes down to the, the patron's choice. If they still choose in order to do that, the money still belongs to the account holder, and the account holder has the ability to be able to move that money however they wish. Jackson says Landmark cashiers didn't say anything when she wired the funds. Landmark says it cannot provide details about a customer, but tells 12 News their employees always question bank patrons when they wire funds internationally, and they say they have fraud detection software. Still, the transaction was completed. The FBI tells 12 News it would never email someone an arrest warrant and would never call a person to ask for money. And as for those persistent texts Jackson received urging her to keep their conversation secret, that's also something the federal government would never do. Why did you contact Channel 12? Because I needed somebody on my side. We accompanied Jackson to Milwaukee Police Department and Landmark Credit Union as she filed reports with both. But investigators say the damage is likely permanent. Is it possible to get your money back when you fall for these scams? It's, it's possible, but it's unlikely that you're going to recover the money um, once you lose it. Um, a lot of times the money is moved through multiple different accounts and sometimes overseas, which makes it really difficult in order to be able to not only track, but then, then recover. Jackson says above all else, she wants to warn to others. I just want people to be aware of how I was scammed. I don't want anybody else to go through this. In Milwaukee, Caroline Reinwald, WISN 12 News.